Welcome to a journey through a dark and haunting chapter in American history. In this episode, we delve deep into the shadows of the past to shed light on a chilling and little-known aspect of the American slave trade. The story of the first human breeder in America. This is a tale of brutality, suffering and resilience. A story that needs to be told to understand the full scope of the horrors of slavery. It is better to confront the past to understand the present and shape the future. Before we get to the meat of this story, kindly hit the like button, share and subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date with our enlightening coverage of black stories. To comprehend the significance of the first human breeder in America, we must first understand the context in which this tragedy unfolded. Slavery in America dates back to the early 17th century when the first African captives were brought to the shores of the New World. Initially, the institution of slavery was limited, but as the colonies and the economies expanded, so did the demand for enslaved labor. Slavery was an economic and social institution in the Americas. The economic prosperity of the southern colonies, driven by cash crops like sugarcane, tobacco, and later cotton, relied heavily on the labor of enslaved Africans. Slavery became deeply entrenched in the fabric of American society, with millions of individuals forcibly brought to these shores and subjected to a life of unimaginable hardship. In 1808, the United States officially banned the international slave trade. It was a significant moment, marking a shift in the nation's stance on importing enslaved Africans. However, this ban did not signal the end of slavery, but opened the door to a new and horrifying chapter. The 1808 Act, prohibiting the importation of slaves, allowed existing slave owners to keep their human property. This legal maneuver meant that the institution of slavery would continue to thrive in the United States, even as the international slave trade came to a halt. Slave owners were now faced with a dilemma, how to maintain their labor force without importing new slaves from Africa. To address the labor shortage, slave owners devised a sinister solution, slave breeding farms. Often hidden from public view, these farms were where the inhumane practice of forced breeding unfolded. Enslaved women were considered little more than commodities, their reproductive capacities exploited for profit. Back then, it was advantageous and hugely profitable for slave owners to have their female slaves bear male children. Imagine the anguish of these women forced to bear children against their will, with no say in their bodies or lives. Terms like breeder and childbearing women became all too common as slave owners sought to maximize their profits by increasing the enslaved population. During this dark period, one man's story stands out, the story of Pata Seca. Born as Roque José Florencio in the heart of Africa, his destiny was intertwined with the brutal chains of enslavement within the borders of Brazil. According to the historian, Emilia Viotta da Costa, 40% of the 10 million enslaved Africans brought to the New World ended up in Brazil. Enslaved persons were so pivotal to the economy that a German educator who lived in Brazil in the 1800s wrote, in the country, the black occupies the main role. Pata Seca's life was marked by tragedy. He became a breeder, a title that stripped him of his individuality and humanity. Forced to mate with enslaved women, he fathered an astonishing number of children, over 200, destined for a life of slavery on plantations. Pata Seca was looked after like one would look after a breeding mare. He was often checked for diseases, kept away from the farm, didn't sleep in slave houses, and often ran errands like tending to the horses and delivering mail. The slavers wanted a good genetic composition passed down in the stocks to create a strong labor force. Pataseca was an obvious candidate. 
brandishing very impressive features, standing at an impressive height of 7F2 and weighing about 150 kilograms, possessing strongly built features and a never yielding spirit, Pataseka was deemed perfect for a breeder. The practice of forced breeding was devoid of compassion and morality. It reduced human beings to mere instruments, ignoring their rights, emotions and autonomy. The chilling truth is that enslaved individuals were stripped of their humanity and condemned to a life of suffering and servitude. Slave breeding was a practice that dehumanized and exploited individuals, leaving scars that persist even today. Let us not forget that these were human beings subjected to unimaginable cruelty. Their lives were puppet strings controlled by their owners, a grim reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink. The essence of history is to remind us so we never go as low again. Despite the darkness of his life, Pataseka's story is also one of resilience and hope. With the abolition of slavery in 1888, he embarked on a new chapter, embracing freedom and family. Pataseka found love in Palmyra, whom he married. Together, they were blessed with nine children. As a symbol of endurance, Pataseka dedicated himself to building a new life for his loved ones. Settling himself as a farmer on the land his master gifted him, he owned and operated Sitio Pataseka, his farm. Pataseka toiled tirelessly in producing and selling rapadura, a solid form of unrefined cane sugar. Pataseka used that to provide for his family. His legacy lives on through his descendants, who can trace their roots to him. Pataseka was said to have trained his children well, giving them names of African origin to highlight their ancestral heritage. He also taught them resilience and how to fight and survive. His family became the bedrock of his life as a free man, and they in turn contributed to the rich tapestry of African-American history. It was said that plenty of his children went on to become leaders of abolitionist groups. Pataseka died at a very ripe age of 130, surrounded by his children and loved ones. Thousands of mourners showed up to his funeral to pay their respects. A tombstone was constructed at his gravesite in a Santa Eudoxia cemetery. As we reflect on the story of Pataseka and the first human breeder in America, we must confront the painful truths of our past. This history is a stark reminder of the inhumanity that once prevailed and its long-lasting impact on generations. But it also reminds us of the resilience of the human spirit, the strength to endure, and the determination to overcome even the darkest chapters in history. Pataseca's legacy was preserved by the Brazilian government and recognized as a symbol of black resistance and culture. Pataseca's name was given to streets, schools, and monuments. In closing, we must continue to shed light on the untold stories of our past, no matter how painful they may be. Only by acknowledging and learning from our history can we strive for a better, more just future where the echoes of the first human breeder in America are finally silenced. The legacy of suffering gives way to a lifetime of understanding, compassion and equality. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel to support our efforts in uncovering and preserving the stories that shape our world. Let's remember the past, honor the present, and work towards a brighter tomorrow. Thanks and see you soon.